Welcome. Today we're going to begin with an Ernest Holmes quote, which is, it is your destiny to see as God sees, to know as God knows, to feel as God feels. That's a pretty powerful statement when you think about it. What it's saying is that you are, I am, we are, to see as God, to know as God, and to feel as God. And yet at the same time that it's a really powerful statement, it's also the only thing we can do because it's all God. And if it's all God, then whatever you are feeling, you are feeling for God. God is feeling through you whatever you feel. God is seeing through you whatever you see. Have you, do you remember that saying, um, what, what I, oh, what I look at? Um, you're looking at what you're looking from. And so the idea that whatever I see is about me and it's about the way that I am allowing God to show up in this world. It is our destiny to see as God, to know as God, and to feel as God. And so um, I think for me that, that has, those ideas have a lot to do, at least the seeing and the feeling, have a lot to do with, with the world around us and the seeing. You know, sometimes we have momentary experiences where we feel as though we have truly tapped into the very heart, the very purity of all that God is. I can remember being on a cruise one time and I took my camera outside and just started taking pictures as we pulled away from the port and took pictures of the islands and the mountains and the beaches and the forests and the ocean, of course, and birds started flying into view. And so I took a lot of pictures of the birds. And then when I finished taking my pictures, I just stood there and marveled at the birds playing and running around, flying around. <laughs> <laughs> None of us were running around. It was peaceful and it was calm and it was a moment where I would say it's a God moment. It's a moment where you know truly 100% your oneness with the glory of all the love and self-givingness of this universe. And yet there are times in life when we fall a little short of that path and it is for us to be wise enough to have um, methods to get ourselves back to that place, whether it's going out in nature or um, hugging a tree. I have a girlfriend that loves to hug a tree. She said every night she goes out and hugs a tree. And so, you know, it's something that, that taps her in to the greater um, unseen universal whole. And then that idea of the knowing. For me, the knowing... Um, we can know as God. That knowing is an inside job. It's something that we must take the time to be still and be quiet and go within and feel that presence, feel that holy, sweet, sweet presence within. So we have the seeing, which is the physical, the knowing, which is the, the in invisible essence of life itself and um, then we have the feeling and the feeling for me is that which follows our thought so I see a bird flying and I think oh how beautiful and maybe you see a bird flying and you think oh those are nasty creatures that have a lot of lice and so we see differently <clears throat> and the thought that we take on within our own mind plays out in our feelings, whether it's an, oh, beauty, elegance, grace, oh, I love it, or whether it's, ew, yuck. Mm -hmm. 
And so we're each free to make shifts in our thinking to shift our feelings. When I'm having challenges and I'm having experiencing kind of a chaotic consciousness and uh, life isn't working like it's supposed to and I'm kind of falling into those distraction loops and falling um, out of my alignment with good, I, I generally start with, with one phrase and maybe it's like a mantra um, and uh, in science of mind our most uh, our primary spiritual practice is spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer and the very first statement is just saying that God is all that is. That simple statement aligns uh, aligns me perfectly because because you follow that statement with saying God is all that is and if God is all that is and I am therefore I am one with all that is I am one with God God is all that I am and if I can go through those that simple progression um, those steps until I can come to a realization all the chaos seems to disappear because I recognize within myself is God living breathing acting expressing through me and as me and so therefore how can I have any worry about chaos or disruption or lack or unhealth or anything else and that I might be experiencing knowing that it's all a matter of thought processes um, that I have created and let, when I can re recognize that God is all that is and I am and so therefore God is all that I am I can release all that chaotic thought process and let it go into the nothingness from which it came and I can come back into realizing my purity and my wholeness and my divinity yeah that's beautiful um, Jesus said um, in John 10 34 is it not written in your law I said ye are gods and and that's like really powerful that that um, Jesus was setting the example for us to realize that that we are of that oneness of invisible life and at the very core of each of our beings is that invisible essence that sweet sweet spot of divinity and purity within us um, peace is an idea that comes to mind with with tapping into or touching the hem the garment of of, of sweet divinity and Wayne Dyer speaks of peace when he says peace can become a lens through which you see the world and so when we look at those birds if we aren't seeing peace if we're seeing and thinking about lice that <laughs> is coming from two possible sources one the source of um, making sure that we are keeping ourselves clean and cleanly and safe and that would be a good idea but also maybe coming from someone else's stuff perhaps as a child we saw a bird and we wanted to go touch it and someone pulled us back and said "Ooh, don't touch it, it has lice and so every time we saw a bird then it triggered that idea of ooh lice rather than grace, peace, beauty, surrender and so taking a look at, at our own thinking so that we can realize and allow God to experience through us the joy and the beauty and blessedness of life is really, really valuable. Ernest Holmes says, nothing can hinder the man who knows that he is dealing with one power that creates all mm -hmm. from itself. Nothing can hinder a man who recognizes his oneness with divinity, his oneness with God, the full energy. You know, May I just say that um, nothing can hinder a woman? <laughs> yeah, that, it doesn't surprise me that you would say that. <laughs> okay, so you like this next quote where it says, no one can do your growing for you, but you can learn how to do that growing. We are all essences and expressions of God. God is expressing through us beautifully and uniquely, uniquely through each individual. Each of us has our own special, unique 
way of showing up in the world. If you don't know what that is yet, maybe you need to do some contemplation and go within and listen to the one power, the one presence within you and listen to it how it speaks through you and then uh, recognize that as your expression. No one can do your growing for you. No one can express for you, but you can learn how to do that growing or that expression for yourself. And so it is.